All right, YouTubers, I wanted to touch on a topic that I have mentioned over the years in some of my porting videos, but I just don't know how clear I uh, came across in those videos where I'm discussing being very careful how much you modify or open the exit of your exhaust port when you're working on your cylinder heads. Um, if you look at this objectively and think about efficiency of flow without reversion, tumbling, or any impedance, then you'll understand the logic and the physics that I'm going to try to explain to you. I am you know, known to do this modification as well, but I want to point out you need to be super careful making this hole bigger than the exhaust manifold or header opening that you're going to bolt to this cylinder head. Here's why. A normal, uh, what we would call raising of the exhaust port, which is a known accepted modification that people do to these LS cylinder heads, specifically these older cathedral ports, you know, but I just wanted to point this out. Where I have colored this with a black magic marker is normally where you would raise the exhaust port. So basically, hopefully everyone knows, but I will mention, when you port exhaust, you don't work the floor. You leave the floor as is. You can clean up the texture and polish it to your heart's desire but don't lower this down. Reason being, is this being the roof of your exhaust port, the burnt hot exhaust gas wants to work flow at the top of your port. Modifying this bottom part to just make this cross-sectional area bigger has no value to a good flowing exhaust port. So back to what I was saying is a lot of people will slightly widen this exhaust port and raise it to the, t to the inside diameter of the top of the exhaust gasket. And that's a good modification because by raising the exhaust, the roof of the exhaust port, you will increase flow through efficiency because of where the hot exhaust gases are trying to go to begin with. Okay. In many of my older videos, I talk about being aware, being uh, planning ahead. And if you have, you know, this modification would work great if you have headers that have an opening that will accept this without restriction. Or if you were to try to do this raised roof technique, port your exhaust manifolds, your factory exhaust manifolds will restrict that opening. Okay guys, with the magic of filming, this is basically what you would be doing if you raised the roof on your cylinder head and didn't raise the roof on the entrance to your factory exhaust manifolds or ran a header that had a large enough tube diameter to openly and freely accept that raised roof and naturally, no one is going to want to have air because remember, the fastest moving, most important part of your exhaust port is the roof. So now you've got, you know, that's got to be over 200 thousandths, maybe closer to 230 thousandths of the roof blocked by the casting of the exhaust manifold. So that air is going to come flying through here, hit this and roll. It's going to become extremely, extremely turbulent and try to tumble and roll after it hits this, which reduces your exhaust flow. So, okay, I wanted to show you both the visual representation of why you have to make sure your exhaust manifold or header matches the new raised roof. I also want to show you what that looks like on the exhaust manifold. All right, now I've got this thing set up so I can give you a little bit better understanding of what we're talking about. 
All right, when you would scribe your gasket to your cylinder head and raise the roof, what we're running into is, and I measured it off camera, you would essentially be raising the exhaust port roof exit 236 thousandths of an inch okay that's awesome you know you're gaining 236 thousandths of roof straightening out that uh, exhaust flow off of that back wall flies around your modified or greatly reduced profile of your valve guide boss and it's trucking out of that port with that new raised roof and then it runs into this because this manifold which I wanted to point out the opening in the manifold is wider from the factory than the cylinder head there was material to be removed on either side of that stock factory exhaust port in the head on the course these are the 862s so you know take that in with a grain of salt when you're examining and measuring other head castings but in my application this thing's plenty big side to side but i would definitely have to cut this out if i raised the roof in that application now remember what i said 236 thousandths of an inch you would be raising the uh, roof and the head this thing is not it's not as thick like when you look at this you're looking at yeah, see it started to move the gasket and I don't want to do that so you're looking at me recenter this thing here make sure we're not getting some weird measurements so you're looking around 162 thousandths maybe let me look at this yeah you're looking at 160 thousandths roughly that is going to literally cause a lot of turbulence that hot air is going to be flying through there at that new raised roof height and it's going to run directly into this and that's bad now is that going to absolutely ruin and kill your combo no i doubt it but when you're looking for every efficiency when you're trying to account for efficiency and trying to make let's say you're using one of these stock manifolds you need that thing to flow to its maximum potential to imitate what a header would provide it's got a lot bigger runners than the old school exhaust manifolds so I just wanted to throw out to you guys, be super careful and be mindful of what kind of exhaust manifold or header you're gonna put on your head or your application and make 100% sure you have a seamless transition from your exhaust port in your head into your exhaust manifold or header because that's free horsepower, guys. That is free efficiency and horsepower that will help you in the long run. And you know it's gonna be beneficial, especially when you're under boost in a, in a turbo application. You want everything to be flowing in and out as fast and as smoothly with no restriction as you can possibly get it. In this application, going on a 4.8 engine, I don't really, I don't know. I don't think it's worth raising the roof and modifying this manifold. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe I'm going to need that 210 plus, you know, CFM of exhaust flow. Who knows? But my point being is, is if you do raise the roof on that cylinder head and modify your exhaust manifold, just always remember anytime you change that manifold in the future, you got to do that modification again, which, you know, isn't super hard, but you have to be mindful on these stock manifolds because there's not a lot of meat right there when you come from under here. And you don't want to just start digging down on that thing with a double cut burr 
trying to make it, you know, match up perfectly and then have some kind of a structural integrity or compromised uh, metal thickness to the outside, especially in a high heat application like a turbo. So still kind of weighing out the uh, pros and cons on my build, whether I just want to do, you know, cause I've already done my bowl cut and blend do all my guide uh, valve guide boss shaping and reduce profile is it worth my time and return on investment to modify this exhaust manifold actually both of them and to raise my roof slightly remember there was only 160 thousandths get my hand out of the light there's only like 160 thousandths from this roof to the gasket Just stuff to think about uh, when you're looking at building these performance engines or trying to improve your efficiency, which in turn means making more power, maybe I overthink it sometimes, but I want to try to just impress upon you, take the time to think. No. think. Think things through and make things match as best you can. appreciate you guys watching these videos. Hopefully you found this informative and maybe kind of struck up a few thoughts in your mind about how you can make your combo more effective. Please like, subscribe, and share.